Okay, let's get started. Okay. Cool, cool. Hi, my name is Anthony and welcome to the News of Ocean and Football. Today with me, I've got a very, very special guest who took the time out to do this. And he's got two days before he has to start the finals in the A-League. So for me, this is an honour. And would you love to introduce yourself, please? Hey, guys. Hey, Anthony. I'm uh, <laughs> Johnny Stentis from the Central Coast Mariners. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for doing this. Took your time out to do this. Yeah, no worries. No worries at all. The first one is that, how did how did you get into football? I think, um, I think actually I started out with rugby, rugby league, rugby union. Uh, I think it's the most common sport in, in Australia. I grew up in Sydney. Um, and then I, I just started kicking a ball around when I was, you know, about six or seven and just decided this is probably the sport for me and just, I yeah, started at a young age, you know, everyone just plays in teams and then just kept on going. Yeah, I, I don't know. It wasn't um, really, I wasn't really born into a football family or anything. It was just more mucking around with the football. Okay, and how did you get the move to Central Coast, basically? How is that all got to that? Yeah, that, this was, um. so before I, I signed my prof first professional and mm -hmm. semi-professional contracts at Central Coast, I played there as a youth player. Yeah. Um, and I, I played, um, so then, then I went to a different club. I actually, um, decided not to play football for a little bit. I, I went and started studying university and okay. then I decided to get back into it a bit more professionally. And when I moved to Wellington, okay. played for Wellington Phoenix. Right. Um, and then I, um, went to the youth, to the under 20 world cup okay, yeah. for New Zealand. And then following that World Cup, um, I was looking for a place to go, which which is the best place to go. And and um, I had an offer from Central Coast Mariners, and I thought it's a really good club for youngsters. Um, you know, they they give youngsters a shot to to play. Yeah. Um, and this season has been really good. This season, a lot of youngsters have been given their shot, and yeah, luckily in the last two seasons, I've been able to. Um, start a lot of games which has been good for my career yeah i've been i've been watching the a league and central coast you've been exciting to watch i, li I like mm. how you're playing what what made it this season like so good like yeah i think um i think it's the group of boys that we got together it's the same coach as last season and um mm. The coach has a lot to do with the group of boys, you know, that come together because he he makes the signings, he um takes on the new players and everything. Yeah. Um, so we've got a really good leadership group, you know. We, we brought in sometimes, you know, the foreigners you bring in, it's hard to judge what they're going to be like yeah. as people. But for one, Marco Arena, who's um one of our strikers, yeah. just a really good guy, really good leader. He he um. He went to the World Cup with Costa Rica when they mm. went on that really good run, yeah. made it to the quarters or semis or something like that. Um, so he he's in our squad, and you know we've got Oli this year, who's a really good leader on and off the pitch. And I think our standards have just lifted a yeah. lot. Um, and that was just a mental change, you know, like coming last last season, and you know I think everyone just said you know something needs to change and. Um, and then we just lifted our standards a little bit, said, you know, some things that happened last year were not acceptable anymore. And um, and everything lifted with that. And once you start winning a few games, you get a bit of confidence and you just build on that. So that's what we did. Okay. And how's it feeling representing your country as well? Yeah, so awesome. Um, obviously, wasn't always with New Zealand, but... My dad was really keen to get me on board with New Zealand, and um, they've really welcomed me like like family, and and I'm so proud to represent them now. Um, I represented them at the Under Twenty World Cup, and it was a it was an amazing campaign for us. Um, we did really well. We beat Norway. We beat Honduras five nil. Um, I, we were unfortunate to get knocked out by Colombia in um, penalties. 
in uh, the round of 16. But yeah, it's just it's just it's just another step up from club. Um, you know, when you when you go into camp and yeah. um, um, play with your national team, um, you're you're living with them. It's it's quite different to club. Yeah, you you live with the team and um, and yeah, I think that breeds even more closeness and unity in, in the squad and in the team. So, and I think you can see that when that difference when um, you watch club teams play versus international teams, you know. Yeah. So um, yeah, it's amazing. Also, like, can you describe, like, your playing style? Because I know your playing style, you're very, you're a CDM, and you're very strong, and you go for the tackles as well. I've yeah. been, yeah, yeah, I've been keeping my eye on you, yeah, you're, like, the standout player I've been, I've been <laughs> watching, especially the overhead kick you scored. That was rude. Yeah. That was very rude. That was very, that was a good <laughs> goal. <laughs> you gave that player yeah, nightmares yeah. and the goalkeeper as well. <laughs> I, I would say um, I am that I'm, I'm like that strong man in the midfield mm. uh, and, I, and I love that and I always love um, you know winning the fight for, for for our team you know showing the showing the other team that no we're the, we're the tougher team here um, mm. but at the same time uh, I'm not just all about like toughness like mm. I've got to, I like to be a bit flamboyant a little bit flary sometimes um, so so yeah, I hope I can score some some goals in these finals as well. Um, yeah, <laughs> when when I score, it's usually it's usually pretty special. But I, I just need to score some some more because I haven't scored on this season. But yeah. Uh, <laughs> and the next one, and the next one is that um, would you like to represent the senior team if they give you a call up? Would you like to represent it? The New yeah, Zealand? definitely. Yeah, I really like the coach, and um, I think um, yeah, it would, it would be huge. The, you know, New Zealand have got a a really good team and a really good um, a lot of good youngsters coming mm-hmm. through, and I think and I think it would be a good national team to represent. Yeah. Do you believe they can qualify for the World Cup? Yeah, hundred percent. Uh, obviously, like oh, I'm like may or may not have been part of the squad that we were supposed to have. Uh, yeah. World Cup qualifiers earlier this year, but they were called off because of COVID. But hundred uh, percent, I think we can make the World Cup. I think we're a pretty strong squad. Oh yeah, I forgot to say, how did you deal with COVID? All of this, the pandemic, and COVID mm. from last year. So how did you deal with it, basically, personally? Yeah, personally. Well, I think um, everyone in Australia was very lucky with how um how little numbers we got and obviously that's just because of how quickly you know the government stamped down on on mm. everything and in, increased regulations and stuff yeah um so basically what we had to do was maintain a bubble with our team yeah um we couldn't go see many friends but you know i, I still had a girlfriend through um these periods and um and and you know close friends and family you know i can still go down to sydney and see see my mom and um so and i live with one of my teammates so um it wasn't too big of a change for me you know obviously uh there's less clubbing and stuff like that but um that's not a big component of my life um you know it's not the most meaningful component obviously so so yeah um I don't think it was too much of a change for Australian footballers. Obviously, our season, our season, we had about uh, I don't know, at least a two month break or something in the middle mm-hmm. of our season, which was strange. But um, yeah, well, I just have to. You just we didn't train as a team. I, I just kept training individually, just try to keep the fitness up because well, at that stage we never knew when the competition was going to be called back on. Mm-hmm. So, um, so yeah, it was that 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 period when the when the competition was called off um was um yeah it was pretty individually cha- challenging just it i think it showed who really wanted it because when when everyone came back into yeah. um club training you could see some people were like, overweight and yeah. unfit and everything and others were fit and ready to go you know yeah and um, can you describe how the a-league is like the style played there as well 
Mm. Yeah, I think um, the A League is the intensity is very high. Okay. Um, yeah. I think one of my agent actually sent um this chart to the group chat. Yeah. That he, of players that he represents, where it showed that the intensity of the A League is very high. Okay. Um, yeah, yeah. In terms of pace of play and um, running of all the players, um, compared to compared to other big leagues over the world, obviously, other big leagues over the world have have players that can do serious damage one on ones, and um, maybe probably overall, I think the biggest thing is everyone's touches are better and and their passing is crisper and everything. But in terms of intensity and fitness and um, tackles and all that kind of thing, the A League's very very up there and fast paced i think a lot of the games you watch is um you know we're moving a lot and um it can be back and forth and um and yeah and i think yeah the a-league's a club where i mean a, a competition where there is a lot of um there is a few big clubs with a lot of money and yeah. um a, a couple so there's a big range of um financial finances across the clubs and i think yeah central coast the 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 least finance club but yeah we've we've done really well this season and it it just shows um that that those kind of clubs can do very well because i always hear about the a league it's always is a physical league it's yeah, just yeah, just yeah. a physical league is it like very physical um yeah well obviously i mean i haven't played in any other professional league so i can't really compare it to any other professional leagues, but I think I think it is just watching it um, compared to other leagues. Obviously, I, I would think English Premier League and you know the Championship um, would be probably more physical and um, more tough. But um, compared to other European leagues, I think it's very physical. Yeah. And um, what was your what was um, the club goals this season? Yeah, this season we like we set the bar very high we are actually aiming for top two to finish in the top two Mm. um to make the asian champions league so that was our goal and we try to base you know our behaviors and our attitudes and our standards around around that um and i think you know i am the aiming the bar really high held this year um obviously we just missed out on that narrowly but third is uh an amazing feat um mm. considering like the last five years of the club so yeah and is playing in the asia champions like your personal goal to get that experience and to play the best players in asia mm, in i think it's definitely um the team's goal i wouldn't say it's my personal goal i think everyone's personal goal i i think is to reach you know one of the big leagues in uh mm. in europe i think if you can play there and be competitive and start in those in those leagues in those teams playing against the best players in the world i think that's my goal personally okay um you know to compete against the best and to beat the best and to play with the best that's probably my goal personally but um definitely while while i'm here at central coast i want to you know lead them um to to the epitome of of asian football which is the asian champions league yeah yeah, that was that was the next question. Like, like, do you want to make like that big move? Is that is that the next goal to move to Europe, basically for your career? Yeah, definitely, definitely. Um, yeah, I think a career can take m- many paths, um, and there are other big leagues in in Asia that um, could be a stepping stone, mm-hmm. um, depending on what offers offers come. But I think, yeah, it from from when you're a young kid you know you're watching european leagues um and mm. that's always you know the standard that's always the goal so yeah. um that's always kind of what you're looking for eventually you know in the in the future so um that would be yeah that would be my dream i think and um, what if you want to say what country would be your dream move basically yeah well um one thing my agent says is um you don't want to make a big move too early because you you know you get left behind and you want to always play at at, at each place you go to so i mean if i move to english premier league tomorrow 
I wouldn't be starting in a team. Yeah, and yeah. so, you know, although it would be an amazing move, you know, it probably wouldn't be the best move. Um, eventually, when I'm at, you know, when I'm at my peak and when I'm ready for it, I think, I think I'd want to play in the English Premier League. I think that's my dream. Oh, wow. Dream league. I think you're a yeah. diff- you're a different kind of player who I, who, I, who I interview because they just want to make that big move and they think yes I can do it but you you deep think and say that okay if I make that big move I'm not gonna really be playing games so I'd rather have game yeah. time than I know it when I start yeah. improving then yeah yeah you you got I think yeah. your mentality is different who like yeah. who built that in like the different mentality or did you just learn it basically. Well, I, I think, um, I think my, my agent has, um, told me about that. My, my dad's very smart with that stuff and has, um, told me about that stuff. And, and I've seen a lot of players make a lot of big moves over the years, Mm. um, who who have been at my level and in my teams and stuff. And, but they haven't, they've made the move. uh, Quite a few Australian players go to Germany often. Yeah. Um, you know, one of one of my when I was younger, one of my teammates went to Borussia Dortmund, mm. um, and another one of my teammates, Sapreet Singh, moved to Bayern. Yeah. Not saying that was a bad move, but like it's tough for him to start in in Bayern Munich. You know, first name, yeah. uh, and and the other friend who moved to Borussia Dortmund very early on when he was young, um, he's actually now back at in the A League. Mm-hmm. Um, and it, on the bench for Wanderers, so so that's that's what can happen. Eventually, you need to come back to to a place where you know which is your standard, and and um, I think you have to be honest with yourself with, with where you're at right now, um, and um, obviously, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and in your in your game, is there there's is there improvement you want to do in your game? basically your strengths and weaknesses i think um i think yeah that's a hard that's a hard one um i would definitely say i want to get better at heading the ball and scoring off like corners and stuff yeah and free kicks um but also also i think the biggest part oh like where everyone where everyone can improve Mm. um is just um how fast they think and how fast they can execute what they want to do, you yeah, know. Yeah. I think that's the biggest change um, when you go up levels is just um, quick thinking and executing. So um, I don't know if it's any, like, particular thing. I-, I think, you know, I can, like, hit a diagonal ball. Like, I can pass it short. I can chip it places. Um, I'm not really in a position every game to shoot, so... That's not such an important trait. I would say heading. I think um, I could probably, because use my height and size a bit better mm. there. Um, but I think, yeah, the difference in levels, the difference when you move to a, a better league is probably just the intensity of play and um, whether you can match that. Um, yeah. Okay. I don't want to take up too much time. I don't want to take up too much time because I know you're a busy guy. It's just the last one is that what is your, what is the goals for this season and you personally for this year, basically? Yeah, well, for this year, my year is very exciting. Mm. Um, we've made finals now. Yeah. So, and we just take finals one, one game at a time, you know, I play on Saturday. So, we're really keen for that and we've, we've been training well um, the last few days and obviously when you're in a knockout competition you know you take one game at a time but the dream there is to win the grand final um, and then following that uh, I pretty much go straight into preparations for Olympics for, with the New Zealand national team whoa and <laughs> whoa. yeah 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 so the, there's no break really <laughs> um <laughs> So I, I go straight, I'll, I'll head to New Zealand mm. um, and start preparing with, with the New Zealand national team and then we'll head to Tokyo. And um, with, with the team with the team we have, you know, we have... Um, oh, oh, 
Chris Wood, sorry. I, I, I forgot his name. But I had a blank. I couldn't figure out. I remember his first name. Chris Wood, he plays for Burnley. Yeah. Um, striker. Yeah. And um, oh, I don't know if I'm actually supposed to say that, but whether he's dropping down. But, you know, we've got a very high calibre of team. Yeah. Um, that, that we're going to put into that competition. So, um, you know, I think we can do big things there. And obviously in those knockout competitions... Um, it doesn't matter how big, you know, names of the of, like on the teams there are. Like any any one team can beat another team on the day. So yeah, um, definitely, I just want to do as well as possible as we can there. So, and then following that, um, I'd I'd love to make a big move overseas or um, r- represent Central Coast again another year and do even better than we have this year. Okay. Thank you for your taking the time out to do this. Honestly, it was just big shock to me. Thank you for yeah. it. I wish you success, and hopefully you do reach all the way into the to win the A League, the grand final. Yeah. Also doing yeah. well in Tokyo as well. Also, yeah. hopefully you make that big move as well because I know you're yeah. you're a very good player. And I'm always wishing you to make that big move. Yeah. I'll yeah. Be no worries, Anthony. No. I'll be following your, yeah, um, I'll be following your career closely, very closely. Yeah, thanks, bro. No, thanks for having me on. I think um, your questions were really good, and they were really um, because you know you go on a lot of interviews and they don't really like, you know, feel their way through the interview. They just yeah. kind of um, just go off. I don't know. They don't really, you know, listen to the person as okay. much, but. Yeah, I think, think you're really good. So thanks for having me on, man. All right. No, no worries. I thank you. Thank you. Is but there... Oh, yeah. Sorry, one more thing. Is there anything you would like to say? Anything you'd like to say? Uh, well, I wish you luck on um, your football channel and yeah. promoting uh, Oceania and everything. I think that's really cool. Because, yeah, it doesn't get much light. I think yeah. it's, a, it's an up-and-coming up area of football. Yeah. So that's really cool. Um and yeah, support support the channel, guys. If you're listening. <laughs> oh, thank you. No, you're too nice. No, thank you for this. Thank you, thank you. No worries. And good luck in your in your matches as well. And I hope you do, um, win the trophy as well. Yeah. Thanks, bro. Thank thanks. you. And stay safe All as right. well. Have a good day, bro. You too. <laughs> See you later. See ya. See ya.